Welcome back to the home gym. Today I'm bringing you a complete upper body workout. Alternating push pull, it's going to be long, difficult, intense. Let's get right into it. We are starting off with the incline dumbbell bench press using my new Olympic Pipe dumbbells. These are by far the best dumbbells I've ever used. They're insanely stable, never rattle, and can be loaded up to 120 pounds using your already owned plates. But most importantly, the overall quality is unmatched. These Pipe dumbbells feature neural volcano handles with all metal construction and are 100% made in Canada, so should last a lifetime. The attention to detail is immaculate from the dimensions, usability, and materials used. I love that there's no sleeve sticking out, which often obstructs range of motion, and the feel in the hands is so premium. Definitely expect to see a lot more heavy dumbbell training from me. Speaking of which, it's smart to start with dumbbells given the coordination and stability demands which are maximized in the fresh state since there's low fatigue. So if you do barbells later, the performance drop off is actually less than the other way around. John Meadows also did this by the way, and same for incline. You start with this angle if your upper chest is proportionally laggy, and although mine came up a lot, you can never have too much, and there's still a large strength discrepancy, like my best is only 315, so still need a lot more work. Now for back, I started with my current favorite exercise being the super wide grip pull up. This has done more for my back than any other vertical pull. In the last year, you have seen the gains blow up right before your very eyes. My lats, Terry's major, everything thickened up. And I credit this 100% given the fact that I can get more out of less weight. Like here, I'm not even doing two plates. It's a bit under, yet it feels identical as lifting three plates and above. Yet what's also amazing is the one-to-one -one carryover. If I narrow out my grip on this same workout, I can double the weights, no cap. I have proven this with my previous gymnastic session. So I'm getting equally as strong and correcting a part of my back that was neglected. Win-win, don't underestimate the leverages are brutal. Then for the final set, I do chest to bar. And then once that's no longer possible, you just get chin over the bar. Try to go to failure or leave a maximum of two reps in the tank but preferably you should be getting those grinder reps at the end. This way you can be efficient with your training. Like this is only body weight, notice that. Yet, I was pretty trashed after this single set. There's a reason why I don't need to do 10 sets of 10 or insanely high volume prisoner style pull up workouts. For the second push, I chose the barrel press. This is a dumbbell bench press in which you're using a neutral grip coming out a bit more so that they clear the body and you're holding the weight in the bottom position thereby inducing stretch mediated hypertrophy. And what's great is that you don't have to go heavy. You'll drop a significant load. Like those who can hit even 80 pounds are very strong. So don't worry about that. Just focus on the form. If your hands aren't getting really low comparable to a camera bar bench, then you're ego lifting. Like look at your elbows. They should be pointing straight down. And know that this is very easy on the shoulder joints. So even if you do have long arms, there shouldn't be any discomfort whatsoever. Now, it's also key that your form is not diagonal. Make sure they're vertical. And I found that if I bring my hands out too far out to the sides, then it does start to be problematic on the joints. But if I keep it narrow, which actually does stretch the pecs nicely since they wrap around the ribcage, you're good to go. So don't have it too close, such that your triceps are limiting factor, but also don't make it too wide. Medium grip, basically like a power fly, if you will is what'll do it for you. And you see the straining, absolutely unbelievable pec contractions. Next poll, I chose chest supported rows because the dumbbells were already loaded and this is an effective exercise. That's even more difficult than doing one arm at a time. You'll have to drop it low considerably. So this is the first set. I feel like it was a bit too heavy. Range of motion could have been better. So I dropped it down, obviously strap up as well. Not because grip is limiting factor, but because I want my back to be maximally destroyed. And I'm gonna do some fat grip work later. So. This is what it is, full range of motion, getting a stretch at the bottom. You see my scaps are protracting. And then I get those dumbbells to clear around the hip area. So I feel it's a good overall thickener, strict, does not load your spinal erectors. And for form, make sure you're closer to the edge of the bench. This way you get a proper stretch of contraction without the bench being in the way. Now, we got one more push, this time vertical. Deficit handstand push-up. Honestly, guys, this is just as good as any other overhead press. The same hypertrophy outcomes, and that's why I chose it. 
So with the deficit, you get super range of motion. Look how much my arm is bending. And when you're this far into a session, fatigue has crept up to the point where even getting 10 reps is difficult. So I'm pretty close to being shredded at this point, and I'm still having difficulties, just to say. Do not underestimate calisthenics. Anyone who says you can't get big with it is clearly uninformed or are intentionally trying to manipulate you. Because I'm telling you for a fact, you can get bolder shoulders with this exercise alone. Just to say, I'm preparing for a bodybuilding competition, yet often feature these in my rotation. That tells the entire story. So please, if you're able to do handstand work, and this is easy to learn, low skill, you just drag those feet up and down the wall, do experiment, and it will build three adults. For the final pole, I chose my signature ghetto spreader pull down. The fact that the legs are up and wide might look weird, but that's one of the benefits. Spinal flexion equals maximum lengthening of the lower lats, and we're somewhat pulling in the sagittal plane. So the stretch and squeeze is unmatched. I'd much prefer this over pull downs done at the gym. And this has been my main cable exercise for well over a year by this point. I absolutely love it. The spreader bar is superior to the V-bar in every possible way. Since I get a better squeeze, the hands have come out a bit and it's less restricted. So this couple with pull-ups, you're going to build a really wide back. You see the muscles working. And all I'm trying to do now is maintain my strength. I've been at four plates for months, which I actually think is great since I'm much lighter now. Out of all the muscles, back seems to be maintaining the best. Now for isolation work, you can say, I'm doing the chest crusher with expander pull apart this has become one of my favorite exercises it's taught me how to really contract my chest especially when i do the most muscular pose and it makes me strain like nothing else even more than when i would max out with the bands and chains there's just something about old school training man why is it always so effective like look at this come on you see the striations the separation and of all things, I feel like my upper chest improved from that exercise. And the expander, I mean, I've talked enough about this, but I'm primarily doing this for the delts and upper traps, which actually did come up. And I see muscles in my back that I didn't even know freaking existed. So second set, I switched to the underhand grip. Very surprised because normally I can get double the repetitions, but by this part of the workout, I was starting to get really tired. So one thing I will note, a lot of you guys compliment me. Oh, Alex, your work capacity is phenomenal. Actually, right now, it's complete garbage. Compared to what I'm used to in a calorie surplus or even maintenance, I don't feel fit at all. I'm exhausted. And that's why I haven't been filming many workout videos to begin with. Like, I'll show you some highlights on Instagram, but I don't particularly feel the best, even though I might look the best. But that's simply an illusion, guys. I'm struggling quite a bit. I'm not as much of a beast as you think. Anyway, that's it for chest and back. Now we're getting some arms, starting with fat grip hammer curls using the Pepe fat series these feel way better than your typical rubber grips and it's difficult in fact i realize my brachialis and forearms surprisingly need more work from a strength perspective for size you can argue they're overdeveloped and you can even see the separation at this body fat but i don't like that i'm lifting these kinds of loads now there is fatigue to factor in as well but i gotta start doing most of my curls with fatter implements for sure it's easier on the elbows and you get more bang for your buck. Then for triceps, chose the spreader pushdowns, was already set up, and sometimes you don't want to set up dual ropes. Plus, this is a bit more stable in the sense that all you gotta do is press with the palms, but the exact same benefits apply. Whenever I show you a variation that's not internally rotated, you already know it's long head. So I hope that me being a broken record has instilled what's happening. And then I do mechanical drop sets, again for more long head, go till I can't even bend my arms a couple of inches. So you'll see some partials in the bottom hitting 100% failure. So actually you can do one set and get away with it. I did two, which you're not going to see now because or else the video is going to be 50 minutes, but you'll see it as B-roll on other segments. And then for the final superset, chose preacher curls for the short head of the biceps. I love the stability of this. You can see how much my arms improved, especially looking jacked in these barbell apparel clothes. It's unbelievable what isolation work can do. The moment I got away from minimalist thinking, I mean, you saw the transformation. So now my biceps are starting to look great. And I'm actually happy with the separation, overall density, size. You see it. Come on. This is in the t-shirt. 
It's crazy because I never thought my arms would look this good. I struggled for years. So preachers are one of my favorites. I like to think of it as straightening my arms on the way down rather than bending, if that makes sense. Little mental cue that gives you a slightly better stretch. And obviously full range of motion is fine if you build up the tissue capacity. Never torn a bicep, don't think I ever will. Welcome to the natty game. Last exercise, decline dumbbell extensions. It's like doing an inverted overhead extension. It's easy to keep those elbows up and back. And my way where I rotate a bit at the bottom and hold for a good one to three seconds, wrecks the length and position. You will feel so weak and that's what you want. No elbow pain, all long head stress. And you can grind on this exercise. Give it a shot and you might not want to do regular skull crushers ever again. So with that said, I am done this difficult upper body workout. Hope you enjoyed watching me suffer. Now it's your turn to try it out. Let me know how it goes and I will see you in the next workout video.